I am going to talk today about a very, very important topic and a topic that is very personal to myself um, and I hope it's a topic that will be relevant for everyone. But before I begin the topic, I want to give some context. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ibrahim a very, very important and relevant and life-changing verse. But before I talk about that verse later on in Surah Ibrahim, I want to give some context for the verse. Surah Ibrahim itself, when it was revealed, was revealed in a specific context. And the context of the revelation of Surah Ibrahim, along with some other verses or other, other uh, group of verses, was during a time when the Prophet ﷺ and the companions were going through some of the hardest trials of their lives. This was towards the last portion of the Meccan period. And this was a time when they were going through that very, very uh, turbulent time. They were being uh, tried very, very severely at this time. And during this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, at the beginning of this chapter, he tells him the reason why the Qur'an was revealed. And he says this reason, and it's, a, it, it's the essential reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. He says that it was revealed, and the reason why he sends messengers is to take people out of darkness into light. And this was the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those who were with him. But then he later on goes and he says there was someone else who had that mission too. He tells us about another person who had that mission and that was Musa alayhi salam. And so later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now brings up the story of Musa alayhi salam. And he's telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those who are with him. It's because this is the thing about the stories in the Quran. The stories in the Quran are not just stories. We don't just tell our children these stories to help them go to sleep. These are not bedtime stories, but these are powerful, timeless lessons. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, actually comforting the Prophet and those who are with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by bringing up the story of Musa alayhi salam. Why? Because Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel were going through trials that were trials that we can't even wrap our minds around. These, these, were, these were a group of slaves that lived under the worst tyrant to walk the earth. We think Trump is bad, right? This was the worst tyrant to walk the earth. And he had a policy where he killed babies. This was a policy. It wasn't just one or two. This was his actual policy. This is what these people were dealing with. That is the trial that they were going through. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the Prophet sallallahu by bringing up a story of someone who went through great trial. Now, this brings us to the next point. What is it that Musa alayhi salam now says to his people? Because what is happening in these ayat, what's happening is Allah is telling us what Musa alayhi salam said to his people while they were going through trial. And not just like kind of like, you know, a little bit of trial, but a massive trial that was so massive that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it massive. He said he tried them hard. It was a very, very difficult trial. And Allah is telling us what Musa salam said to help bring his people from the darkness to light. Now, when we talk about darkness and light, darkness and light can mean misguidance, and light is guidance, right? But darkness and light can also talk about difficulty and ease. So he's actually telling us how Musa alayhi salam was able to help comfort his people. What does Musa alayhi salam say at this point? Now you'd think that when a person is going through trial, what do you say to them typically? You typically say, be patient, right? You typically say, have sabr. But what's very interesting is that in these verses, Musa salam is not telling his people to have patience. He's not telling his people about sabr. He's saying something completely different. In fact, he is saying something we wouldn't expect. Now, this is very powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is announcing something. This is really big. And what is it that Allah is announcing? That if you are, if you show gratitude, I will increase you. Why is this so mind-blowing? Because the Prophet Musa here, alayhi salam, isn't talking to a people who are being tried and telling them to be patient. He is telling a people who are being shaken in a way we can't even imagine. Th these are people he's speaking to whose children have been murdered, whose babies have been killed, and he's talking about gratitude. That's revolutionary. He is saying something we wouldn't expect. But there is a principle in this that every single one of us can benefit from. Why is he telling them about gratitude? First of all, look at the ayah for a second. Now, when you look at the, the grammatical, um, if you look at this, this, this ayah grammatically, you'll find that what it's talking about is it's talking about a previous, it's past tense of gratitude, and it's talking about even if you were just thankful once. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not asking for us to be perfect, you know, perfect, uh, just always thankful. But he's actually saying that even if you once in the past showed gratitude and thankfulness, then we will surely. Now the second part is la'in, la'in is la'azidannakum, is, 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 that he will increase you. But the, but the emphasis here is very powerful. He is saying surely. Surely we will increase you if you just show a little bit of gratitude. Now, why is this so powerful? Because what is happening here is a lot of times when we go through trial, it's very difficult not to focus on what we don't have. See, as human beings, we're kind of, it's, it's, we're conditioned to focus on what's missing. We're conditioned to focus on problems. You know, there was this meme, um, and it like at the top, it has a picture of this kid who's looking at a slice of cake, and he's just beaming, he's so happy. And then there's another kid underneath who's looking at an entire cake that's missing that one slice, and he's really sad. And the reason why he's really sad is because he's looking at the piece that's missing. He's not looking at what he has, he's looking at what he does not have. And because of that, even though he has more than the kid on the top, he's actually sad. See, there's this principle about life that the more you focus on something, the bigger it looks in your eyes. And whatever you focus on will grow. If you focus on what you don't have, it will look bigger and bigger in your eyes until it consumes you, until you don't see anything outside of it. But there's this very powerful phenomenon that when you focus on what, whatever you focus on will grow, so if you focus on what you have, it will also grow. And you know, subhanAllah, there's, there's, this, there's this principle that Allah teaches us that a lot of us don't realize. You know when you hear the ayah, inna ma'al usri yusra, a lot of times we hear this verse and we think, okay, after the hardship will come ease. As if life is about all bad and all good, right? We think that life is like, okay, I'm going through a hardship right now. Many of you are being tried in a very, very severe hardship right now as you're sitting here. And a lot of times we're thinking, you know, when this passes, then I will have ease. Once this is over, right? Once Allah takes me out of this situation and once He relieves me from this trial, then I will have ease. But that's not actually what Allah says. Allah says, Inna ma'al usri yusra, meaning that with the usr, with the one trial, Allah gives you many eases. And it's actually at the same time. Honestly, this concept totally changed my life. Because I was like the type of person who, as kind of like the, the kid on the top, no, the kid at the bottom, um, where you focus, you know, it's just, it's natural. You know, you don't have one thing. You have five million things, but you don't have one thing, and you're looking at that one thing that you don't have. And the other thing, the tendency that I have, which a lot of us have, 
is that we believe, it's like when you're in a specific moment and, you, and there's something upsetting you or there's something that's hurting you or there's some sort of pain that you're dealing with, you focus on it so much until it's all you see. And you cannot see outside of it. But what's very powerful here is that Allah is saying that at every single moment, no matter how hard your trial is right now, these people's babies were killed, right? How can, uh, no one, you know, the, the trial that they were dealing with doesn't compare to our trials. And yet they are being spoken to about gratitude. Why are they being spoken to about gratitude? Because at every single moment, no matter how much you're being tried, Allah at the same time has given you many eases. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Now there's another very powerful principle. And that is this. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us, Ajabun li amri al-mu'min. This is a very like, whoa. This is, by the way, if we understand this principle, it will absolutely change our lives. And that is this, that the matter of a believer is strange. Amruhu kullu khair. All of his matters or her matters are good. So, whoa. What does that mean? It means that even within the trial that you're dealing with right now, there is good in it for the believer. And along with the good in it for the believer, there is ease. And there isn't just one ease, there is ease upon ease upon ease. Allah never ever gives you the hardship without giving you numerous eases. And a lot of times what happens is we don't see things properly. I'm gonna give you an example. One time I was sitting in an airplane, <laughs> um, as I sometimes do, and um, I have to sit on the window. So, you know, you look out the window and you start like reflecting, right? So I'm reflecting about this phenomenon that I observed in life, which is that a lot of times you see people that when something really good happens in their life, you know, like something that you'd consider a really awesome life event, they're getting married, they have a child, you know, just something really positive. That at the same time as that really positive thing, a tragedy happens in their family or something really difficult happens. And for a moment I was sitting and reflecting about, I wonder why that is. I wonder why is it that that happens and a lot of times they, they come together, it's like someone's getting married and, and I've seen this many times, like someone's getting married and at the same time they have like a parent who, who passes away or, or is in the hospital, you know what I'm talking about, right? And so these things tend to, I, I, I felt like they, they, they tended to sort of come and, and sort of spoil the good thing. But then I realized I was looking at it wrong. Right? I'm sitting here thinking, okay, why does this bad thing have to happen to spoil the good thing? But let's turn it around. Why don't we see it this way? There was something very difficult written for that person and it was going to happen at that time. And out of Allah's mercy, He gave them that ease to make it easier for that person. You see the different way to see it. So this person's father was going to die. And actually, I know someone who this happened. Her father died while she was on her honeymoon. She came home to, to his funeral, literally. So you, you think about that and you think this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written that her father was going to die at that time. And then out of his mercy, he gave her her husband just before that to help her deal with that trial. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't spoiling our good things. Allah is helping us in our trials. And this is a completely different way to look at things. This is to focus on what you have and to realize in Allah's mercy, yes, Allah gives you difficulty. Yes, Allah gives us cold weather. Allah gives us storms. Allah gives us hunger. But Allah also gives us shelter and Allah also gives us food. He gives us the ability to cope with those trials. He'll give you a really hard trial, but he'll give you those people who will help you in that trial. He will give you the aid in that trial and that's out of Allah's mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you focus on that which you have, He will increase you. Stop focusing on, on what you don't have. Stop focusing on what's difficult and focus on all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to help you in whatever is difficult. Yes, Allah gives us trials. 
But Allah never, ever leaves us in our trials. Allah doesn't just give us trials. He gives us trials in a package with ease. And not one ease, but many, many eases. وَلَئِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ They come together. And so Allah in His mercy is saying that if you are grateful, even just a little bit grateful, like that's the grammar of the ayah, even just a little bit grateful, I will increase you. Now here, you find that it's like general. It doesn't say I'll increase you in such and such. He doesn't say I'll increase you in wealth or I'll increase you in, you know, in children or whatever. But he says, I will increase you. And then he doesn't say anything after. It's, it's general. Why does Allah do that? Because he's left it open. He has not limited it. He will increase you in many things and in, in it throughout your life, in, 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 in different aspects. And it's unlimited, the increase. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. First, I'm going to say this. Every single discipline that talks about the human condition, that talks about psychology, that talks about anything that has to do with personal development or self-help, everyone has agreed to this. One of the most powerful treatments for depression is gratitude. The practice of gratitude that they have actually found in studies that if a person keeps something as simple as a gratitude journal, that it becomes so effective in treating even depression. And something else that they found, every single person, they, they, they have this theory that people have like a baseline happiness and that things will happen in their lives, that, you know, good things will happen, they'll kind of peak, but eventually go back to their baseline. And really bad things will happen, it will go down, but eventually go back to their baseline. And so they studied, okay, well, how do we increase the baseline? Everyone wants to be happy, like, you know, for like extended periods of time, stable happiness, or we'll call it well-being. And what they found is it's very, very, very difficult to increase your baseline happiness. That most people just kind of have that baseline throughout their life. Except they found that there are two things that can increase your baseline happiness. One is giving to others. It is service. It is helping other people. And two, it's the practice of gratitude. And so it is very, very appropriate that Musa alayhi salam, when he is speaking to a people who are being tried and shaken and, and going through the, the greatest pain of their life, he is talking to them about gratitude. He is giving them a way out. He is telling them, focus on the light and the darkness will get less. And focus on the light and the light will get bigger. This is what he's teaching us.